YouTubers, it's Tyler here again today. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna go over my solid roller spring setup for my LT1. Now, if you look right here, this is the spring that I decided to run. And I ran this spring for several reasons. Number one, it has a coil bind of one inch, 100 thousandths. That is very important. That's important because my last spring had the exact same coil bind. And also, my LT1, the install height, the most I can get with my current setup, and that is with the uh, length of the valve and the retainers or whatnot, is going to be 1.79 inches. Why is this important? Well, if you look at this spring, and it's advertised um, seat load is 129 pounds at 1.835 inches. And that is the advertised install height for this spring. That doesn't mean that you have to run that install height. That just means that this install height is gonna work because this spring will work on a solid or a hydraulic lifter. And if you want this to work on a hydraulic lifter, this is the installed height you're gonna to have to run it at. Now, when I run mine down to this installed height, it doesn't mean that it's gonna be wrong. It just means that I'm gonna to have to run a solid lifter at that installed height because the seat load is gonna to be too high. It's going to collapse a hydraulic lifter. When you get your cam, how do you know at what coil bind that you're not gonna bind this um, spring out at this install height, so that way it'll work with the cam that you wanna run, which the cam I wanna run is gonna have 617 lift at 1.6 ratio. So what you do is very simple. You just see what your coil bind is, take your install height, minus 0.617, and you get this, 1.173. And your coil bind, you see this right here, it is not going past my coil bind. It gives me some wiggle room, so I know at this spring, at that lift, I should be good to go. Now there's another problem I have with this spring, and this is very important. This was an LS spring, which means the valve guides and the valves are all smaller than my small block Chevy. Let's go ahead and see how big this is for me. I'm gonna go the fraction of an inch, because the LS valves are eight millimeter. If you look at this, I'm at 11.30 seconds. Now let's take this guy right here, go to mode, go to millimeter, and look at this. So the diameter of my valve is pretty much standard with uh, small block Chevy stuff. It's not that new fancy stuff, which caused another issue. They only made one spring locator for this spring. And it was set for a 500 thousandths diameter of the valve guide. Which means, since my valve guide for my seal is 530 thousandths, that the locator that came with this spring will not work because it will not fit over the valve guide. So I did a lot of looking, a lot of looking. I couldn't find anything, talked to comp, and they're like, oh, you're gonna have to have a special you know, locator made, it's gonna cost you a lot of money, and I was like, screw that. So I had a couple of these guys sitting around, and I noticed that uh, they were actually pretty close. See, the, um, the locator has one purpose. You know, its purpose is to keep that spring from jumping around, and it goes around your guide into the bottom of this. See this right here? That does not work because the diameter is too much. So, using the Redneck Engineering School of Hard Knocks, I made a little little procedure that I could, and I had to make sure that it was a very duplicatable procedure. And I'll show you guys that in just a second. So now I can use $30 spring locators on my LT1 head and get everything perfectly working for this setup, which saved me a lot of money. This is a budget build and we're gonna make this work and we just did. So let me show you guys how I did this to the locator real quick. Now to get the locator so they will match up to uh, your spring, since I had to kind of rig this, I got a three inch socket on there. This will just nicely snap on there. So, make sure it's tight. Let's 
why I love me some Harbor Freight drills. You know, I wouldn't do this for the $100 drill. All right, so that's on there. Spin it up. We're gonna shave this down now. This is a pretty stout steel. This is a hard steel, so it takes something pretty strong to uh, grind it down. Just be careful. Silly? I'm still gonna send it. <laughs> now we're gonna check. That needs to go on some more. You can see how stout this is, how long I ground it. I wasn't pushing very hard. You don't want to take too much off. But you can see just how strong that hardened steel is. So let's do it again. Oh man, look at that. See, it's still pretty tight. So what I do for the rest of this, get some sandpaper. All right, I got all the locators done for this head. Another thing that I had to do, I had to uh, grind down the top of these locators so that way the seal that goes, the valve stem seal, can slide down all the way. If not, then the locator was going to obstruct it from sliding and seating all the way down on the guide. Anyway, so that's all done. Look for the next video. I'll be putting these heads together and I'll be showing you how to use the spring height checker. Until next time, peace out.